Today, we're going to talk about the proper way to charge your vape battery. Facts and fiction, do's and don'ts, today. Hi everybody, I'm Dan Hoff, Chief Operating Officer of Honey Stick, and today I'm going to address one of the most frequent questions that I get to our company, and that is questions regarding charging your vaporizer. Now, this is a pretty broad area, and I'm not going to make it so it's only applicable to honey stick vaporizers, but to any type of charging situation you can incur throughout your vape devices. So, let's jump right in and start talking about the proper ways, do's and don'ts, facts and fiction about charging your vaporizer. And I'm going to use all the customer service experience I have and questions from you guys from the channel. So let's dive right in. First of all, charging your vaporizer when you get your vaporizer. Vaporizers, generally, 95% of them, fall into the category of two different types of chargers. And this is 95% of all vaporizers. So if you're watching this video and you vape, most likely you fall into one of these two categories. And it's very simple. Charging through a 510 threaded adapter, which means you would take a charger and screw it in to the actual 510 thread portion of the battery and then charge it. The other portion is through micro USB, meaning that your pen, whether it's a stick battery or whether it's a big mod, is going to be charged through a micro USB port opening. And you would plug it in and that is how your battery would get the charge. And it's a standard micro USB. Now, one of the big do's and don'ts, one of the big don'ts that involves here is if your battery has a micro USB charger, that doesn't necessarily mean, unless if it's manufacturer specified, that you can also charge it using a 510 threaded adapter piece. So whatever your battery is made for is the way you want to continue charging it. So let's go first with the smaller category, which is mainly only used for stick batteries. So that's batteries that are very lightweight and very small using the micro USB adapter. Now your manufacturer will in general when you order your vape pen or your stick battery will provide you with an appropriate charging adapter to screw into the 510 side of that battery. Once you have this, this is the only way you can charge it. You can buy extras. One thing, many, many people lose these things. And this is the only thing that will allow your battery to receive current. So many people, first trap that they kind of fall into is they lose it and they don't know which proper one to order. Now one thing is, is there's two different types. And we're going to zoom in nice and close here. Is you have ones that have a male and ones that have a female end. If you have a very skinny battery, you can use either, but if you have to choose one not knowing how skinny or how thick your battery is, you're best off going with the straight male portion because as I'll show you, thicker batteries will fit on there no problem, but they might not necessarily fit or be compatible with the female version. This is the kind that we sell on Honey Stick, so if you do lose your adapter, then make sure that you get a mail adapter. Now, the next question that I get regarding charger batteries is if the indicator lights aren't working, how long should I leave it on the charger? If you have it set up properly, your charging time should be somewhere between an hour and a half to three hours when you, once you get it onto the charger. Next is there are proper charging sources. Now, and not proper charging sources. This is one of the most common mistakes that happens, is that when they get it, they take the battery, they screw it into the charger, and then they don't plug it into a proper charging source so the battery either is not taking a charge or it's not getting a full charge so it's not going to perform to its full potential or it's going to limit the lifespan of the battery. So what I tell people, and this is one of my most frequently used responses, is the best charging source for this is a simple wall adapter with a single micro USB port 
or to plug it into a desktop computer. Now, let's go right in here, and this applies to all vaporizers, is that you want to make sure the maximum current is getting to your batteries. Now, things that I want you to stay away from is the old Apple wall adapter. Not because I have anything against Apple. I have an iPhone myself, and I love the thing. However, when it comes to vaporizers, and this is specifically the Apple block that I'm talking about, as you see a little Apple logo, that still has the micro, I mean the USB cable, right here, to plug in. It'll plug in, however, Apple has something in their devices to where it will recognize if it's an Apple, and if it's not, it will not give it a full charge. So a lot of people who say that their vaporizers aren't taking a charge, they're actually using this Apple block and it's just not giving it a full charge. So when they switch this block out, it'll charge the battery up no problem. So stay away from this. Also, another thing that I tell people to do is to stay away from rapid charging devices. As you can see, this charger is a split charger. It has a normal port as well as a rapid charging port and other chargers that offer rapid chargers. Now, it will give your vape battery a good charge. However, it may actually shorten the life of your battery because it's not meant to go through that. This is a small phase battery, and it's not meant to go through multiple rapid charges. So if you want to preserve the life and the performance of your battery, I would stay away from rapid chargers. Next, I tell people, stay away from plugging into a laptop computer USB charging port that is not plugged into a wall. The reason I tell you this is because you've all seen it. You have your laptop computer running on its program and then when you remove the wall adapter your screen dims. That's because there's less current flowing through the system and that means there's going to be less current getting to your battery and not giving it the proper full charge that it needs to perform its best and to get a full charge. The other thing that you want to stay away from is these multi USB ports and we'll get a picture up right above my head here multiple USB ports they're going to split up to more than two or three USB outlets because that's just splitting the incoming current way too much and you're not going to get a proper charge for your battery lastly we want to stay away from the power banks power banks are just like laptop computers just a big battery it's not going to give steady current. The current that it gives out really depends on the charge of the power bank. They're great for emergency situations to give yourself a small charge, but don't rely on it day in and day out to give your battery a proper charge and to really run it through its full cycle. Okay, so now we just went through the different types of wall adapters. So let's get into one of my next questions is that, wow, you just listed a bunch of things that are not great to charge your battery. So let's talk about things that are good. So we sell a simple wall adapter on our website, which has a single USB port. Also, Amazon Basics is a great place to go. All of the Androids that I've used between the Samsungs, the different Galaxies, the Amazon Kindle wall adapters, even the Blackberry wall adapters, we've used, we've tested them in-house, all these different brands, and they all give the batteries an adequate charge whether again you're going from a small stick battery to a large mod battery so the batteries that we want to go with the battery charging boxes or wall adapters outside of the factory provided 510 or replacement 510 is you want to go with Amazon Basics, the Radio Shacks any of the Amazon Kindle, the Androids, the Samsungs and also even the, the, the old Blackberries. I have a bunch of the old ones laying around. They work just great. So now that we covered 510 thread batteries and how to properly charge them, and a lot of the manufacturer specific ones, whether to, the battery got a full charge, will actually be indicated on the LED. So for example, our twist battery, when this is green, that means that the charge is full and that will be indicated through a pattern while the device is charging. So for real specifics outside of basics of an hour and a half to three hours, you want to look at the actual battery that you purchased from the manufacturer, what the full charging signal sequence or time is. And we're just talking general to help you out. Now let's get into mod batteries. 
Mod batteries are going to run on a micro USB as we mentioned earlier. Now a lot of people do lose the cable to these things. And in general, you can use other replacement cables. Like this is a replacement cable from my Amazon Kindle. It's a nice, long, convenient cable. I use it for a majority of the mod batteries that I have, and it works just fine. Plugs right in, and it gives my batteries, whether they're a two battery or a single battery, 18650, no matter what the milliampers are, it gives it a full charge. Now, most of the stick batteries that have micro USB slits, like this orange example that I have here, and even the small concealers that have a real, you know, a, a rather small battery that I want to say is 650 milliamp hours or less. The milliamp hours is the capacity of the battery, and you can check each battery with the manufacturer. If it's less than 650, you can use the provided any of these little thin kind of pigtail cables that you can get your hands on, and they're going to give you a sufficient charge. But once you get up to these mod batteries that are really high capacity, you want to use a nice thicker gauge cable that's going to give your battery the proper current. Now, some manufacturers, I know that Tesla SIGs is one of them. Um, I know that Geek Vapes is also one. They really strongly urge consumers to use uh, the factory provided cable and to use genuine parts. Now, I haven't tested all those personally to know if it's an Apple-like thing to where it's in programming that it will give it a proper charge. But when you're using those, whether it fits or not, you want to make sure you're using a high-quality cable because those are very high-output devices. Now, some, some vape mod batteries, generally some of the more expensive ones, they actually come with these very high conductivity, these, uh, these braided cables and fancier cables. If your mod unit came with one of those because it's a high output battery, you want to make sure that you're using a high output charger, charging block, as well as a high conductivity cable to make sure that the battery life and that your batteries are getting a proper charge. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're hurting yourself by putting like almost like low grade gas into a Ferrari. You know, you're just not letting the car seek its full potential. So, you know, you definitely want to check that and keep it consistent throughout the time. Mod batteries, because they have some of them, like this one, uses two internal batteries to charge. And these are two pretty high capacity Samsung batteries. It's going to take a little bit longer. It might take over three hours. But those will also have charging indicators on the digital screens to provide you when they are fully charged like bars on a cell phone so you'll be able to take a look at it and see that you got a full charge and it'll explain it. So I hope this video answered a lot of questions around proper charging tactics that you should use, some of the do's and don'ts, some of the facts and fiction revolving chargers, allowed you to avoid maybe some of those mistakes some people might do that could jeopardize the performance or the lifespan of their vaporizer. So if you like this video, then go ahead, smash that like button, hit subscribe for other cool vape content. I hope it helped you guys out. Check out our website, www.vapehoneystick.com, where you can pick up some of these charging accessories in case you need extra or lost yours. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at vapehoneystick or official vape honey stick. And make sure that when you're charging your batteries, you're doing it properly and safe. Take care, everybody. I'm Dan. See you next time.